Even with the money necessary to fight the war, the government realized they would need the popular support of Americans, most of whom had been either neutral or openly against involvement. Therefore, President Wilson appointed a former muckraking journalist, George Creel, to head the Committee on Public Information, our nation's first propaganda agency. Creel was a giant when it came to advertising and public relations. He called his committee the world's greatest adventure in advertising. Creel convinced the best writers, artists, musicians, and advertising people of the day to help him sell the war. From booklets and books for Americans in various languages to anti-government propaganda messages for our enemies. Creel even got into the movie business with features such as Under Four Flags with the help of famous film director D.W. Griffith. These pro-war movies were not only hits, they actually made money for the cause. $852,744. Remarkable when you realize that it only cost a nickel to see a movie back then. Simply put, Creel helped make an unpopular war popular. His masterstroke was the creation of a national force of 75,000 men who would deliver a patriotic four-minute speech anytime, anywhere. The four-minute men spoke on the draft, rationing, bond drives, and victory gardens. By the end of the war, they had delivered more than seven and a half million speeches to 314 million listeners. Musicians gave voice to the war. Songs like, Till We Meet Again, It's a Long, Long Way to Tipperary, Keep the Home Fires Burning, and Over There, Kept American Spirits High.